Welcome to this walkthrough of the beams and joists modules which are available in both Struckcock Plus and Struckcock Pro. This walkthrough will primarily focus on the floor beam as a complete tutorial and will then show you the differences in the floor joist, roof beam, and roof rafter modules. The hip beam will be covered in its own video. All modules in Struckcock follow the standard design process with properties on the left, the design window in the center, and design information on the bottom. Output will appear on the right-hand side of the screen, along with adequacy information on the bottom. LRFD and ASD design is available. Here, you can also select wet or dry factor for beams and joists. The first step you should always do is set your material, species, and grade combinations. These options will vary slightly depending on which module you are using. Wood is based on the 2018 NDS. Steel is based on the AISC 360-16. And structural composite and eye joists are always as up-to-date as possible based on manufacturer's public information. You can always check the available codes by looking under the project settings. Next, set all the properties in your design. Size. Options. Factors. Deflection. And elevation. These options vary slightly depending on which modules you are using. This dead load calculator and other calculators are all easy ways to calculate and add loads and are covered in their own video. Here I would set my span lengths. We will make a three span floor beam. Then load the design. Struckcock supports uniform loads, trapezoidal loads, point loads, axial loads, moments, and length loads. These loads can be applied in either the X, Y, or Z directions. Linked loads are covered in their own video. Loads can be entered in three ways, either from the left side, where the designer must calculate the load magnitudes on their own, through calculators on the right, or by switching to Design View, which uses the old Struckhawk input methods to create live and dead loads that are locked to the Design View. You can mix and match all three of these methods. I'm going to add a point load in the Y direction and then add a snow load in the X direction. Note that when you add a load you can set its combination type to live, roof live, dead, wind positive, wind negative, seismic positive, seismic negative, snow, ice, rain, or earth. These can also be changed after you add a load in the lower toolbar here.
You can also use this span tab to edit your spans. Now that iDesign is complete, I am going to use the Auto Size feature to determine if the beam passes as designed. I've selected my results and returned to my design, where it has generated adequacies and VMD diagrams. Since I use the auto sizer, this is all going to be adequate. If I was doing the design iteratively on my own, I would probably need to investigate some failing adequacies and make some manual adjustments. Next, I will open the print preview to view my output and customize it for future printouts as part of my project. I can select diagrams and different views here. These will be saved for later and automatically used in the print preview for the print project. Now we will open the floor joist and you will notice the only difference is you can select eye joist materials. And in the size drop down there is an on center spacing option. Also under factors, repetitive use factor is automatically selected. In the roof beam module, you will see the only difference is that it uses a roof pitch in the calculation of tributary width loads. Lastly, in the roof rafter module, you will see a combination of the floor joist and roof beam. This module allows on center spacing. The repetitive member factor and a roof pitch in tributary width load calculations. Thank you for watching this walkthrough of beams and joists in Strutcock.